This little festival of color and texture is Lance Egan's red dart. Maybe it's just the high water we've had this year in the east, but this fly has become a go-to pattern for a whole slew of anglers. It's really that good. For a hook, I'm going to use a Lightning Strike JF2 in size 14. After getting hold of the hook with plunger style hackle pliers, I'll use my bodkin to pick up a 7 64ths of an inch gold slotted tungsten bead. The bodkin helps to center the small hole of the bead in my fingertips, while the hackle pliers allow me to easily insert the point of the hook into that hole, then slide the bead around onto the hook shank. After getting the hook and bead assembly firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise, slide the bead forward and get it correctly oriented behind the hook eye. 0.02 lead-free wire is used to add weight and to help stabilize the bead. While holding the bitter end of the wire, take seven or eight touching wraps around the hook shank, then helicopter to break it off. Slip the wire rearward so there's some space between it and the bead. Using just the smallest amount of super glue, or here, fly tire Z-Men, apply the adhesive to the hook shank between the wire wraps and the bead. Quickly slide the wraps forward so they butt up against the back edge of the bead and hold them there with a fair bit of pressure for a few seconds so the adhesive sets. This will not only hold the bead in place, but also allow you to tuck in the tail of the wire without the wraps simply spinning around the hook shank. For thread, I've loaded a bobbin with a spool of UTC 70 denier in red. Get your thread started on the hook shank behind the wire and take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the tag. Then, wrap forward to just behind the wire. Red saddle hackle is used for the tail of the fly. Select a single feather and pull down a dozen or so fibers perpendicular to the stem. Squeeze the fibers between your fingertips and strip them free. You can then make sure the tips of the fibers are aligned by aligning the butts. With the tips pointing toward the back of the fly, measure to form a tail approximately a hook shank in length then transfer that measurement rearward to the start of the hook bend. Take wraps of tying thread to bind the fibers to the top of the hook shank all the way back to the start of the bend. You can then snip the excess butt ends off close. Pearl colored sulky sliver metallic is used to rib the fly and protect the delicate peacock curl beneath. A 10 inch length is enough to make numerous flies. Lay one end of the material against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps to secure it. Keep it on the near side of the hook as you take wraps rearward all the way to the base of the tail. You can then wrap forward over top of the wire wraps to further stabilize them, and with your tying thread hanging at about the hook point. Although Lance uses peacock colored dubbing for the body for increased durability, I'm going to go with three strands of the natural stuff. Begin by snipping off an inch or so of the delicate hurl tips. Lay the tips against the near side of the hook at the back edge of the wire and take thread wraps to secure them. Go all the way back to the base of the tail. Then gingerly and without twisting, bring the hurls between the hook point and your tying thread. Wrapping behind the tying thread like this helps to compress the hurls and create a nice full body on the fly. Once past the hook point, begin putting a little angle into these wraps, like so. This will also add to the fullness of the body. Leaving a small amount of space behind the bead, take wraps of tying thread to firmly anchor the peacock curl, then reach in with the tips of your tying scissors and snip the butt ends off close. Get hold of the sulky rib and start making open spiral counter wraps with it up the body of the fly. Five or six turns usually looks pretty good. These wraps will dramatically increase the durability of the fly. When you reach the front of the hurl, use your tying thread to firmly anchor the sulky to the top of the hook, then snip the excess off close. I like to use brown saddle hackle for the collar of the fly and measure to find a feather that has barbules one size or so smaller than the hook I'm using. So here, size 16. Pull down a few fibers at the butt end of the feather and snip them off Christmas tree fashion to form a tie-in anchor. Place the anchor against the near side of the hook with the shiny side of the feather facing you and take nice tight thread wraps to secure it. Thread torque will then cause the shiny side to face forward. Lift the feather up, then bend it through your fingertips to fold the fibers rearward, like so. 
You can then take wraps with the feather, preening the hackle fibers rearward as you go. After a full two turns, use your tying thread to anchor the stem at the back edge of the bead. With the tips of your tying scissors, snip the excess off close. Sweep the fibers rearward and take just a few thread wraps to pin them back in that position. Pink ice stub is used to create a secondary collar on the fly. Only the smallest amount is needed. Make a short thin dubbing noodle on your tying thread, then take wraps with the noodle to build up a narrow little collar on the fly. Take wraps of tying thread in front of the collar to add a thin hot spot accent. You can then do a four or five turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip or cut your tying thread free. A drop of head cement, or here, Sally Hansen Hard as Nails, applied to the thread wraps will help to keep them from unraveling and increase the fly's durability. I have no idea why trout are so attracted to this pattern, but they most definitely are. 